Uh, well, I'm gonna head and change the titles though. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's yeah. like total, like total BS or something. I, I I called it up all night, but I can name it to the BS hour if Whatever. you want. <laughs> it's like <laughs> uh, Church Keys primed everybody. <laughs> we're we're just having. Uh, are we recording yet or no? I, I just started. <laughs> oh, cheers then. Now we're gonna start off in giving a lesson about martinis because yes. I like martinis, but if you are ever in the presence in front of me and you dare use vodka and martini in front of me, you're probably going to get hit, okay? Because that is what we call bullshit. The original, the original martini is vermouth and gin. Mm-hmm. Get old, okay? None of this apple, strawberry, uh, cherry, cranberry. No, 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 I, 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 since you're a purist, since you're a purist, I have to ask, uh, dry or extra dry, and shaken no, or stirred? No, not dry, I like them wet, because see, dry is mostly gin, I, pre- I prefer mostly vermouth, but if you want to know how you tame, an mar- original martini should be, if you're going to make a small, let's say, one part gin, two parts vermouth, okay, now, or, or and if you, you're going to do, just always make sure you have more vermouth for a traditional original martini. If you, to tame the flavor, always pour a little bit of olive juice in it. It'll, it'll help make it smoother, it, it's, it, the flavor is more pleasant. But that is the original martini. So don't anybody come after me like, and you can, and shaken is good, like James Bond likes to shake it, but I was so ashamed at some of the, where vodka suggests help. God, when vodka has nothing to do with a martini, so I must say that. Uh, now, I, I, I'm trying to remember what that drink's called. There, there's, um, there, there is a vodka drink that's made like a martini, but you're right, it's not a martini. Martini is gin. <laughs> I can't remember what that's called. I was asking dry or extra dry because there's there's different degrees of vermouth. Uh, okay, well. To me, when you say a dry martini, you're going after more of the gin because I mean vermouth. I I I am thinking from the poor bloke who used to be behind a bar at one point, and there's there's <laughs> there, there's there's dry there there's dry vermouth and there's extra dry vermouth, so and the one thing you damn martini. Flavor if you put more gin in it, you're gonna you, the gin is, becomes actually so powerful that that if there's more gin in it than vermouth, then it, the taste is changed. Oh okay. yeah. So. Well, no, no, no. The, the number one complaint, it's like uh, the number one thing y'all always bitch about us poor blokes behind the bar is we don't listen to what you said. It's not that we don't listen; it's that y'all don't give us proper orders. <laughs> <laughs> ask for what you want, and we'll give it to you. <laughs> Whatever yeah, the hell it is, is, you yeah, get it. Just ask. And they didn't have. Oh, they had all these martinis, and I'm like sacrilege. They had all these quote unquote martinis on the menu. And we go to the waiter and I say, dude, just here. You don't have you don't have a physical person. And, and the waiter's looking at me like, oh god, here's another asshole customer, right? So anyway, so so I'm like, you do not have a martini on the on the menu, okay? Here's what you need to do. If you if you have Bombay, Citadel, Tanqueray, great. That's gonna be the gin. But I want you to put mostly vermouth in it, a little bit of olive, ju- olive juice, and then shake it up and, 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 and give it to me. It took four effing waiters. And they came in, and this is on my anniversary with my wife. My wife! This is a weird <laughs> she, she can't drink because she's pregnant, but, but you know, she's laughing her ass off that all, like, a manager comes up. And, like, all the it's, it's like, dude. Gin, mostly vermouth, a little olive juice, shake it, deliver it to me. But no, you, you, you're, you're going to make me freaking look this up now. Like, uh, <laughs> my little book of drinks. See, that's the, thing, the other thing I can get into is cigars. I have 1964 anniversary bo- you know, box set cigars. I'm a big cigar dude, too. No, I, th- I think that's actually like the official re- recipe for a martini. I think it's like uh, three fourths, um, 
it's on, and the rest is, um, yeah, okay, but I think that, yeah, uh, uh, okay, here's the official <laughs> recipe for a martini. Okay, I'm, I'm listening. Uh, the official recipe for a martini is gin. Now, now, you know, what type, obviously, depends on the martini drinker. Right. Uh, it, two ounces and a fourth ounce of vermouth. So the official... Oh, that's, that's a dry one. Okay. Yeah, it's a dry martini. Or, or a Gibson. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, and then... Uh, but the actual martini is actually the other way around. Uh, it's, uh, it's an ounce gin and an ounce to an ounce and a half, depending on the house, vermouth. Boom! There it is. Yeah, it's like, uh, and, and you know, it's a, you know, of course you, you know, use a stupid mixer and you either stir it or shun or whatever the hell they want. But that, that's the thing. Like everybody remembers a stupid dry martini, and because that's like the more popular yeah. one. Yeah. But yeah, it is. I, I've never heard of pouring the olive juice in there. But and uh, well, and, and yeah. honestly, I would see a lot of places that wouldn't let you do that because then you'd immediately have to clean the. Uh, Martini, you know, you'd have to clear this stir thing out because <laughs> you got to get the olive I mean, juice but, out but of there. The olive juice, the olive juice, because if there's too much vermouth in there, it does have a, a very for a lot of people the aftertaste is too is too pungent. So to reduce that pungency, you use olive. Juice. No, yeah, no, I, oh. I, I, I hear you. It's just this one. The audio is like feeding back in the ears right now. Good luck. Oh, God, no. <laughs> no, it, it's like, I, I, I hated the like, uh, martinis because y'all always freaking pick. It, it, it's like, it, it, freaking martini drinkers love to fuck with bar. It's like, it, it's like they deliberately line up in line. Like four people who want martinis and then they'll, they'll like shaken, stirred, dry. Fuck. They'll deliberately fuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and traditionally, the martini is served in a, you know, the, the triangular stem glass, predominantly because vermouth is a type of wine. And I, 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 I don't know why it's served in that glass. Of wine via the temperature of your hand. Yeah, so that's why it's traditionally served in the manner. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I, I, I always had a way to deal with you people who insisted I shorted them because I, I, lo I love that that uh, triangular glass. Every time somebody insisted that I'd shorted them, like I hadn't put enough in or something, when that when that martini's fucking mixed right, at least in the right amounts, uh -huh. as long as it's what you ordered, that glass is exactly halfway full. And I, I, I God, I'd make 20 bucks off of freaking martini drinkers every day of the week, because anytime they freaking call me that, I go, bullshit, I'll make another one exactly like that, and I guarantee you that glass will be exactly freaking full. Like, bullshit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, oh, yeah, it is. Exactly. And then again, I, then again yeah. I, I, I actually knew how to free pour, which means I knew my measurements were right. That's <laughs> like, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, now, now, the other drink I'm a big fan of, and most of my YouTube subscribers know that, is scotch. But I'm a single malt man. I will tolerate blended. But I am a single malt person. I, I love single malt scotch, particularly a lot of scotch with a lot of peat in it. So, you know, th those are my two things. Uh, that I, I, I'll drink rum and coke as a fun thing, but my, my two serious drinks that I enjoy are martinis and scotch. Bam. So. Yeah, I'm not really a big scotch or martini. No, no it takes a while. Phil, what about you, man? It's funny actually, I tell you what, after listening to you two, it's funny, after, um, I've never actually been uh, one for alcohol to be honest, and after listening to you two, I tell you what, if that's how much hassle it is when you go to order it, I think oh, I'm quite relieved. Uh, yeah, you, you know, I, 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 I know how to make a bunch of things, but honestly, if I'm just going out to have fun, I... If I know they know how to make it, I'll just order a Long Island, and then I get good and Oh, stuff. you do like Long Island iced tea. Okay, Long Island iced tea is another one I will I will drink. Okay. But it has to be made right. It does. Absolutely. <laughs> you do not like a sweet version, correct? Uh, yeah. 
Let's you do like it? Oh. No, 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 no. I can stand it. But the one I like is the one that's like the traditional one. You know, it's, yes, it's okay, just yeah. iced tea. It's, it's sweet, like, it's not, but you have to have the Coke. They got to get every freaking one of those five alcohols in there exactly right. They, yes, it's they a do, ratio yeah. thing. If you get even one freaking thing off in there, <laughs> that ain't a Long Island. That's... Yeah. I don't know what that is, but it ain't in Long Island. <laughs> yeah, you know, people that, you know, I, 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 and I respect anybody's uh, choice, whether they say, oh, you know, whether it's religious beliefs or a health concern or what, what have you regarding alcohol, but I have appreciation for it because it's something that is aged in most cases. And a tremendous amount of logistics goes into it in, in creating that flavor. And so, in essence, it is an art form. And, and more so with uh, a lot of whiskeys and, and, and scotch, you know, well, scotch being a form of whiskey. But uh, you have a lot of history that's gone into trying to perfect flavors and things like that. The best Long Island iced tea, how to perfect a martini, other types of mixed drinks that have evolved over time. I mean, and these things, a lot of these drinks date back way back. But there's a tremendous amount of creativity or art, if you want to say, in pride that goes into giving quality. Because you can actually, I mean, if you sit there, and, and like my wife is a perfect example, I'll try to introduce her to scratch. I'm like, oh God, it tastes like, it tastes awful. But usually, if I can get her to say, look, hold it in your mouth a little bit, and, and, and sit there and try to, you know, use your sense of smell taste on your tongue and stuff like that and then swallow slowly and try to even if it feels disgusting to you you still are going to be able to pick up a lot of variances in it you're going to be able to tell if it's spicy if it's fruity if you if you even taste like petroleum and i know people are like oh petroleum yes that's what we call peat in scotch uh, <laughs> you, uh, uh, different types of woods uh, and you and believe it or not, okay, well, you taste all these things. Well, that is part of the appreciation. Now, if you just outright dislike it, that's great. Okay, the combination of all those things you don't like. But by you telling and saying, wow, I taste this, I taste this, I taste this, I taste this, have the appreciation for the aging and all of the work that goes into it. it, it, it it's quite a... A, a big deal. I mean, if anybody's gone to a farm where they like they produce rum, where they produce gin. Yeah, I'm gonna say the way it, you're talking, I'm surprised you're not a whiskey and rum drinker for crying out loud. <laughs> well, I, I drink a lot of whiskeys, but, but but Scotch is a, is is an ultimate age form of, of whiskey anyway. But but um, uh, no, I appreciate a lot of rums. Uh, my wife being from Guatemala, Guatemala the uh, what is it called Zaca, I think. Rum is one of the smoothest. You can practically drink it. I think it's Zacapa. What is it called? Zac. Damn, it's sort of the Z. I can't remember what it is. Um, one of the. You can drink the rum by itself. Yeah. See, I, I, I'm not a fan of that. It, it, it's. I, I'm more a fan of like uh, mixed things. Then again, I can't stand tequila, but for some reason, I like margaritas. You know. You know, Sam. You can't stand uh, tequila. That's interesting because it's uh, in Long Island. <laughs> it's like well, there are tequilas that they're very pricey because yes, the 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 a lot of even the most popular tequilas have a terrible aftertaste, and that's what kills it for most people. And I found that if you do, if you want to have like a, it's going to cost a lot. Trust me. And I, I, okay, I'll say it, you know if I get religion outright, everybody who, who watches you know on YouTube or has been following me from 2007 knows I'm Jewish. And when it comes to like Passover, which is coming, we can't drink or eat or anything wheat, right? So my so my friend, we have the Passover pass out party. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's never pass out. How do we pass out? We drink tequila. But it's man, tequila. So, so we spent shit. You know, the thing I love about my religion, we just we just had Purim 
which is 24 hours of drinking. Uh, you know, mandating me to get that anyway. So, so you have the Passover and pass out party. And man, you know, you drink, drink great tequila. Man, it, the, the aftertaste, if you get good quality tequila, is awesome. It, you can, no problems. No, you know, and that, that's one of the weird things, to be honest, uh, about um, a, a tequila. It, it, like everything else, like you think. Gold and silver. Well, gold's obviously better, but it's like the reserves with with tequila. You want the silver, you know. You want the good tequila, not the gold tequila. You want the silver tequila. It's like yeah, I've had some Don Julios, some very old Don Julios that are very good. But 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 um, Jose Cuervo, no, no, no. no. Uh, but then again, I, I like I'm not a tequila person unless it's mixed <laughs> with something else. It's like it. I, I, I have avoided having the tequila story, and it's going to stay that way. There will be no tequila story for the sucks. <laughs> it will not be. <laughs> uh, it, so, Phil, you don't drink at all? I mean, is it, is it, is it, is it religious or personal health or, 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 no, or what? No, it's funny. From my point of view, it's just that whenever I've, I've tried it, it's just never something that's appealed to me, funny enough, like what everyone else in my family, you know, they've like, you know, drank my have you at events, but it's just something that's never appealed to me, which is, you know, like when I have tried it, it's just never agreed with me. Well, okay, okay, okay. I'm in between the two of you when it comes to that. Um, I, I will drink socially, you know, I, like we're doing now. <laughs> it's like our 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 our, 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 our like our, our, our going out with with other people are at a party. You know, it's like I, the only times I really get completely freaking shit faced is well, let me explain to you how a group of people I know do New Year's. They do champ they do champagne by the English pint. Oh my god. <laughs> And you better not let them know your glass is empty because here comes the next bottle. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Jeez, man. Uh, yeah, that'll get you in trouble. That don't take long at all. <laughs> I, I, I enjoy I enjoy drink and I don't I don't have the time to drink as often. Primarily, be, I, I mean, kids and family consume a tremendous amount of time. But if if I'm able to sit down with a wife and and we can be we can be together. Beyond just trying to find time between it, but what I'm saying is that we have an evening off where my mother-in-law maybe babysits the kids or something like that. It's so nice to make yourself a drink, slow life down, and those with kids will understand what I'm saying. And I'm sure single single people. I'm not going to say that single people don't experience you know a tremendous amount of stress, but. The, you know, the kids are being babysat, you're sitting there, and, man, you can take in. I, 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 I'm a person who tries to, because as we get older, life goes by so fast. Especially, <laughs> I, I can only speak, speak from experience that when I had kids, it seemed to go extremely fast. But I try to say, let's stop. Let's breathe in a little bit. Let's, let's, let's take in the senses a little bit. And appreciate it, so I can I can take a moment, like a mental snapshot, and say, okay, I'm here now, and I, and I want to be able to remember this moment so that a year from now I'm like, God, gosh, damn, you know, this this the year, where, where has this year gone? I can try to build those moments that say, hey, I remember this moment, I remember this moment, I remember this moment, and you know, when you're when you're able to you know, take it easy. Whether you whether you have a family or a single person, and, and you're able to sit down, and you have a time to yourself or, or with a loved one or whatever, and you just you just sit there and you take it in, and I find that when I have a drink or something, because I appreciate having it. It's not there to say oh, I want to get blitzed, because I, I honestly I've been in the Marine Corps, I've been in the Army, and I've never ever ever lost control. I, 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 I lost control once, but that was when I was 19, and the, the, the end goal of the people I was with 
One of which, it, it, like you're wondering, what the hell is a 19 year old doing drinking? And it was a New Year's Eve party, and it was under the soup. It was under the supervision of my care. And, and honestly, I think this is responsible parenting, even though it's illegal as hell. I think something every parent should do is get their kid drunk. Uh, no, uh, no, no, I, no, no, I know what you're getting at. You're, I know what you're getting at. You're trying to make it not. It's not a taboo. Well, see, my no, 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 no. I, I don't mean the taboo. Day. Everybody should know their limit. They should know what they're like when they're getting drunk, when they're getting overdone, or something. and I would rather that be done, and I'm glad my family did this to me, I would rather it be done under their supervision where I'm not going to go out and kill somebody, I'm not going to go try and get behind a car, I, I'm in controlled conditions, and they took great care and fucking with me the whole next morning. They, they were just having fun with me the next morning, and you ain't going to forget this. <laughs> That's like, you know. Now, my parents never, my parents never got me drunk or, or for, you know, said, okay, you need to experience this, but in my family when I was growing up, alcohol was never such a taboo thing. It was like an open bar type situation, but... If don't think of, don't. I don't want people watching this thinking of a, of a mental picture of a little kid getting out. It wasn't like. I mean, my dad. My, my parents are very French. Marcel is a French name, very French name. Uh, that 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 wine and things like that were are enjoyed. Okay, and that when it came time when I was in college and high school, where my other friends were like, "Oh my God, you want to just forget this?" I was like, "No." I've been there, done that. What? What's so exciting? You know, yeah. I, just, I just go home. You know, whatever. So, it, you know, my kids experience a lot of the same thing, they, and and they get to enjoy wine and some other flavors and things like that. It's, they're not there to get bullets or whatever. Saying that, but I very much do replicate a lot of what I was raised with with my own kids, and. It's kind of the same principle of the uh, uh, of parents saying, "Well, let's get it out of the system," and saying, "So it's you, it's not becoming a taboo thing where you get so excited that it becomes an you know an addiction or or something societal that keeps it perpetuating." What you don't want to have happen. Well, no, and it's like it. like you're saying, all things in moderation. Now, I I I I. I, 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 I I don't now. I, you know, I'm saying here every parent should get their kid. I, I said every parent should get their kid drunk. I'm not saying you should get your ten year old drunk. You know that 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 there there are so many reasons you shouldn't be giving a, a pre adolescent to adolescent any large amounts of alcohol for any reason whatsoever. Uh, but you know, all, all all things in moderation. It, it's it's good to know your limits, and it's good. And, and like you're saying, like when you got to college, you're doing something. Your friends are doing binge drinking. You didn't really have an interest in it because you're like, no, nope. yeah, it, it's so you didn't you didn't do who knows what damage to your liver like most nineteen to twenty one year olds do. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> dude, in the Marine Corps. Oh my God. Oh my goodness gracious me. And it, I. I saw some pretty horrific stuff. I mean, there were, I, 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 I could say honestly, I dealt with maybe seven or eight alcohol poisoning cases in that where I was on, on duty that night or you have, depending if you're battalion or whatever, you, you do like these rotational things, you stay on duty and stuff like that. And, and, um, you get these idiots come back and, 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 and they puke and can suffocate and have so much alcohol poisoning, it's, it's just terrible. See, I, 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 I mean, I've, I've witnessed a lot of stuff being, just, just being in the military and, it, yeah, you know, it, it, can, it can really mess you up. Yeah, and I mean, I, 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 that, that, that has never made any sense to me. I don't know if you've ever, you know, encountered somebody who's done something that stupid, Phil, but it's... How do you mean that? Just, what do you mean that when you say it, did something stupid, just then? They drink to the point that they've basically killed themselves. Yeah, yeah, Phil, let me, let me give you context. Like, in the Marine Corps, you, like, if you're on, like, say... You, you rotate on duty and stuff. You have, like, liberty and stuff like all that, like a battalion level, and you're at the front desk and all this other crap. And you watch whether you're in... If, if you have a family, then you're in, you know, the, uh, housing and all this other stuff. But if you're in barracks and all this other stuff, you, you can witness other soldiers coming in 
that are either brought in by MPs or brought in by a cab that are just you fit you, your duty at that point is physically to make sure they that they don't die by by, by drowning in their own vomit and, and that stuff goes on and so you know, they'll they'll go in their barrack and they'll literally it's 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 terrible that some of the stuff that that went on it doesn't go on in t- the entire amount I don't want to project something that's like this is rampant it's not and yeah there's it, just it, a few dumbasses being like, dumbasses so when you're back when you you go to something you combat training or you go to, or you go to infantry uh, you know, ITB basically infantry training battalion and all such stuff because every marine is an infantryman before you go to your technical school and all this other stuff and those are the days I was remembering that like ITB yes I was an infantryman and I went into sniper school and all that shit as a marine that um the 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 when you're in your ITB in the Marine Corps, um, I, I just remember those days that they'd come back from Liberty and I'd be on duty and stuff like that, and they and they would there'd be just Marines that are just so much alcohol that's poisoning you had to bring them in from Marine and stuff like that, and it, it was just terrible that just, people would just drink themselves to that to that to that point. It is amazing that. Now, I would tell you that anybody who wants advice, if you if you add sugar to anything you're drinking, you're going to you're going to add an exponential effect of how fast it takes over your body. I would recommend that everybody's drinking don't drink with sugar. If you can avoid sweet drinks, do it at all costs. Well, no, and, and that that was actually the big thing with this four loco stuff and other stuff. Like the two things you really shouldn't be mixing booze with unless you really know your limit. Is yeah. sugar and caffeine. These are like the two things. Generally, not a good idea. And of course, when you mix it with these sports drinks, no, I mean, not sports oh, drinks, en- en- energy drinks. You just brought up a flashback. My wife almost divorced me over drinking a Red Bull with some freaking. You know, she drank alcohol and Red Bull. Oh my God! I never want to repeat that evening ever, ever. <laughs> You know, she still she still apologizes for that evening. She's like, never get alcohol at bull again. Well, no, and that, that was the whole thing with the Four loco. Basically, what Four loco and the other drinks like that were was just they were pre-bottling that. Yeah. And it is like, I'm like, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know, mm, yeah. <laughs> But again, you know, this goes back to what I was saying. You know, it, it, it's a good idea, you know, before you send your kids out in the world, even though it's illegal as hell, get them drunk. <laughs> so they know their limit. Because otherwise, they're going to go find their limit out the hard way. I guess. I don't know. My, my dad never, my parents never did that with me, but alcohol was like always there. You know, it's like I, at my house. One day I'll do it. If you actually look at my videos where I'm doing a test, of the iPhone and the HTC uh, Evo, you'll see my bar. It's it's transparent it's glass. You can see the alcohol. I mean, it's that was how it was when I was a child. And my, and I never had an inkling to say, oh God, I got to max myself out. Even even when I went in the Marine Corps, I never I never found a reason to say I got to drink myself to an oblivion. I I, no, I, I, I guess my parents taught me. I, I guess my parents taught me to say, taste those flavors. Do you taste that, son? And, I, you know, depending on the age, I guess, you, the, ter- the terms of interpretation of, of flavor. But I, I, I was raised in that environment to say, wow, this is great. My dad, I should just tell everybody, is a, is a chef, okay? Uh, so you were taught to savor. Yeah, I was. I, I, I guess I, I can't, it can't be applicable to everybody. But my dad and my brother, my dad being a, very much a chef, and that was his deal, that, you know, hey, Let's taste this, and, and, and I guess I it couldn't. It could not be projected to everybody, and, and therefore, and therefore, I guess there is validity to saying, "Hey, get your your kids to do you know X, Y, and Z." But my, you know, my dad just wow. He's like, you know, we're, <laughs> my dad would always emphasize your French. You know, I went on my I went on my first date and had my first. I think was it my my first massive kiss at the age of seven for crying out loud. You know. My dad would look like 
we have French blood in you. Let's let's use it and stuff like that. So, uh, that <laughs> maybe maybe, I, maybe because I'm not French, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and let, and let me let's say something about the French before because I know uh, like the frog and things. Uh, uh, you know, people like interpret the frogs. Okay, the French culture is fine, but I am. I am an American first, and, and and I look back at the French, and yes, those of you that don't know, the Marines have a red stripe on their blue pants. So the blue, we call the blood stripe. That comes from World War One, because the French retreated, and the Marines held the line. And now we've Great alienated space. all our French viewers. <laughs> that is how the Marines earned the blood strike. Because while the French retreated, the Marines held the lines, and that is why the Marines wear a, or have, I can't say wear because it is part of the pants of the Class A uniform, that you have a, a red stripe. And that is, the history comes from that of World War One. Now, I have some, I have, I, I like Fred, Frederick Bastia, which wrote the law, the very brilliant Frenchman, but I don't understand, I don't understand what happened to the, I don't know how to say it, the, the you know, and, and they, they built a Mazinot line in World War II and all that, but it ended in disaster, I don't know. And there was a movie called The Ogre that represented best in terms of, of, there was a chef cooking Cornish game hens for the soldiers, the French army, and then all of a sudden the chef raises his hands in the air, and, and the French are like, what is he doing? You know, he's cooking our Cornish game hens, and the Germans are right behind them. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what, what happened here? It's, uh, I, I have appreciation. Maybe there's exhaustion. Being an American, because I, I, I always have arguments on Twitter about history and how history is perceived in the United States versus it is in Europe, and I get it, that there is, there is, a, there is a point of exhaustion, and the French have a far, far longer history of involvement of war and understand uh, the consequences thereof, let's put it that way, and the United States has been blessed with a, 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 a even even with England, I mean, I mean Philip, even Philip's history, they had a very direct involvement in a lot of shit. Versus recent history of the United States versus our own wars that we that we've had in terms of modern war that the oceans have protected us to some extent to the brutality that being on one continent and ha only having a very small straits separate you from the mainland of Europe, you know, and I'm, I'm referring to the Battle of Britain in that extent, and well, I think, what was it, the op Operation Stan, invasion, that it, it has an effect on a society in saying that the parents raise their children in a certain way and saying, wow, you know, this is, this is not the way to go, we're going to drive it out of our children, we don't want them to have the same life that we have. And I can I and I can say that because I witnessed that in some in some of what my parents have told me. My parents grew up in New England, New Hampshire to be specific, and they had blackouts. And you know my parents are in their seventies now, and and my mother being very young at that age remembers turning off all the city lights. This is nothing in comparison to what Europe experienced, but I can tell you that very brief experience that they had with war had an impact on me because they taught me some things and brought their experiences to me as a child and, and how I interpret things. So I can certainly see how France is the way it is and, and, and involving yourself in the appreciation of very little things, whether it be alcohol or food or art or just living life and that there is an great I'm not going to knock that, but I, but I will say, I will say this, my, my bottom line philosophy is that you can build a great society in the 
appreciation of most things in life. But if you cannot defend that, deci- that society, what is its worth? Well, I, I tend to agree with that. It's, um, you know, it's like the cliche against the French, and I'm going to insult all the French, you know. It's like, how do you say surrender in French? And I'm like, you know, and, and that's the running joke with the French, but it, it, it's, you know. That's why I had to go in that whole level. No, no, thing, no but, but, but it, it, it's like, if you, actually, if you actually study World War II history, the French was also uh, one of the countries that had a rather strong resistance throughout the entire yeah. war. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A, a, rather, yeah. a rather strong information supply chain. They did. But, but what I did not like was that southern France, and what were they called? God, I'm forgetting. See, that's too much. Um, the communist French that ruled southern France at the time. What they you broke up there. Let's say that again. The, okay, in southern France, World War II, they had a more communist-like regime that ruled southern France. And then you had, and then you had the um, the French resistance against the Germans. But gosh, what were they called? There was Southern France. Come on, man! Why can't I remember this? Um, they were they were very close to you know socialist communist in the in, in the southern part. Yeah, of I'm going to say I think you're to. thinking socialist over communist, which aren't exactly I, the I same know, thing. I don't know, but I mean, come on, what is it? Southern World Fort. I'm going to have to look it up in Google, but um, my uncle, the, the, all right, the story is that my uncle was a B-25 bomber. On an off day, he wasn't even in uniform, and um, he volunteered, volunteered for a bombing run of France, and uh, the B-25 was shot down, and my uncle was, uh, you know, he, he was able to bail out of the B-25 and uh, landed it in a tree. His, 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 a lot of his fellow crew were shot dead. Um, the only reason why, and he doesn't talk about it much, but the only reason why he's alive um, in a lot of a lot of the what I've gathered is that the Germans found it comical that that he got stuck in a tree, and and he was laughed at for for landing in a tree, and and, and he was a, he was a prisoner of war. For a long time. Now, what's ironic about about my uncle is that he doesn't he does not have uh, what is it animosity. He witnessed and he said, um, you know, to me that where he was held prisoner during World War Two, that the Germans ate the same sawdust bread as he did. And that they that a lot of the German guards that he witnessed had experience, even so, even though they were outside of bars or, or captivity, were in themselves captive to the what's the sort of those in the you know of, of the different part of, of the world uh, of the world of the uh, 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 of the uh, the Nazi army that got the, the top food, the top drinks and all that because their entire operation was the extermination of, of, uh, of Jews and gypsies and anybody who wanted... Lesser to humans as they defined it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's ironic. My uncle, my uncle was saying, he was like, look, the German soldiers that I was held captive by ate sawdust for bread as well as I did. Uh, what, what, what about you, Phil? Any thoughts on WW2? <laughs> I mean, well, from my point of view, I think that, I mean, that the, the parts of the stories that I've heard was from uh, my, my great-grandfather, and from what he, he told me, he, he mainly, um, he didn't actually go overseas as far as I know, he, he was still at home in Ireland, but um, he, he, he did tell me like how tough it was. Thing is, is that I mean, I, I, I to admire him for you know how how he went through everything. I, you know, that's one thing I've always said is that everyone who went through that period, you do have to admire it. And you, when you compare it to us today and how easy we have our lives, 
Well, see, I, I don't have much direct experience with that uh, because um, my grandfather was in World War II, but he never talks about it. He won't even talk about it with uh, the I never with, do. with, with I his never kids. Do. He, he won't. I, I I do know that indirectly, I owe I owe my existence to a U.S. government clerical error because apparently what happened was. Uh, my grandpa and his best friend decided to go enlist. Uh, and I, 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 the way the story's been told to me, and it's like I said, this is like third party son, was he wanted to be Navy and his friend wanted to be Army. And at some point they crossed their papers. So my grandpa wound up being Army. Wow. Yeah, and okay. uh, the boat that he would have been on was sunk and all hands lost. So, <laughs> uh, I uh, I would not be here if it weren't for United States fuck ups. <laughs> so I, I you know, when people complain about governments screwing up paperwork, I'm like, hey, hey, hey I owe my existence so that they can screw up all damn fucking paperwork they want. Because <laughs> so, that was their thing. They enlisted because they wanted to say and where they were going, and it wound up not working out that way. <laughs> Yeah, see, you know, like, for Europeans, and I know that there's like this drastic abyss between American thought and European thought, and, and, and a lot of that has to do with how our history of our nations are. Good Lord, how, how do we end up on history? I know, I, I segued to this shit, so it's my fault. Uh, you, you brought us here. <laughs> I know, so, I mean, I, I, I'm a very much a history buff, but... But I, I, I appreciate the European view from it because they have, it happened on their turf for the most part. And for the group, for the most part, for, for the, almost the, the entire part. I'm going to say, were you paying it, attention to World War II? Aside from some things going on in Japan and China, it almost entirely know, took Africa, place in Africa, Europe and Russia. But, you know, look, I was, I was in 0311. And then I went into school and being like an like an 0317 and all that other stuff. Um, and then and then in the army, I think it was an alpha, some 32 or something like that. Civil affairs is what I was in in the army. But um, I we I was raised just by having uh, both my uncles were in, in World War Two, and, and my parents had had myself at a very late age. My parents had had me when they were in the very late 30s. And so, and, and so my uncles, um, you know, today both of them are still alive, and I, I can get I, I get some information on them because one of my uncles was on the news um, for one of the U.S. networks for a museum that opened for World War II because he was one of the few survivors of World War II that are still around. Now, like I said, he was in, he was a prisoner of war in the German camps in France, and and. and uh, he, t he, t he told me stories about how he was meant to way of being picked up by the French resistance and stuff like that. But my other uncle, he didn't fight. He wasn't. He wasn't in a B-25 or anything. But he was in Italy, uh, and he was not a prisoner of war. But he was behind the lines of, of uh, Italy, where uh, you know that, that that pretty much Italy ended up pretty much in a, a stalemate until the. Uh, you know, Mussolini's regime was, was was brought down, but they both my uncles ironically have you know very very uh, unique stories, and I think that my my parents had such direct influence. And let me tell you, because my, my mother is so anti. Uh, when I wanted to go to the Marine Corps, my mother was against me. She wanted me to go into something <laughs> or. I guess where she'd say, "Oh, you're not going to come back in a body bag." Type thing was her her words that she used me for. But but my dad always enthralled me with some extreme. I guess, I don't know if you want to call it extreme, but very strong patriotism for this country, and appreciation, though, for what everybody else has for everybody else has experienced. I would say, and that, and that's why I went into that whole segue that has led us to World War II about the French, because that's what I was trying to do and saying, hey, you know. <laughs> So many people like to make fun of the French, but the, the, the French have had their their day, and I think 
my entire point about bringing up the French is that there is an exhaustion point of saying, damn, you know, it is, it is our history, and as we raise generations, always going to be plagued by the same teachings that, man, our parents had experienced war, and, our, and then this new set of parents that have experienced war are going to come constantly pass down to their children. The only caveat, like I said before, is that that's fine. Because I agree with that. There's there's extremities to everything. The only thing is is that with this whole passive movement that I do detect with a lot of like the UN and stuff like that, is that you build a great you build a great society, a society that can appreciate life and all of it all of its choices that in, that are in as we live our life. If you cannot defend it then what is the point? And and see that's what I keep that's what I keep harboring to. And that may be because I have too much upbringing in saying, hey, defense is the most important thing. You know, somebody can contradict me and say, or not contradict you, argue with me and say, oh, no, you need to look at it from this perspective. But I've always I've always thought, and I, I'm a reader of Socrates and and, and uh, Locke. Well, you know, um, I, 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 and, and and I can tell you that that if you don't defend the greatness that you've created, it can be wiped out overnight. And and it's something that that you that you brought up to me when we were discussing religion about like 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 the Muslim religion. I, as a Jew, I recognize even like in the Muslim history that when the the Mongolians had invaded wiped out Baghdad, Europe was in the toilet at that time. A lot of people didn't realize that. A lot of the modern marvels and, and medicine were occurring, uh, uh, you know, in, 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 in Muslim-occupied lands while Europe was going through the Dark Ages. And when the Mongolians invaded, it changed the entire dynamic of that region. Mm -hmm. And... A lot of things were lost during that in, that during that invasion that that, that I don't recognize. You know, I don't recognize that. I, I, it, it, there's 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 things that are are factual to history that you have, that people have to come. You know, that people have to understand that that went on with history. That the United States is great right now, and it'd be great in the future. Who knows? Well, no, uh, yeah, 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 I'm or, hesitant uh, to point out this. Time on top of the hill and the time at the bottom of the hill. Yeah, I'm That's hesitant to point out this truism because we're going to make a lot of enemies by pointing this out. But what? Rome fell, the European Empire fell, you know, the Persian Empire fell. At some yeah. point, the United States will fall. Whether it falls into something greater than itself or it just falls, it. it Who's to say? I would say that today <laughs> we are so focused on, we are so interjoined, we're interdependent, and and I'm talking about economically, that a lot of these futures movies that have come out to depict corporation control, <laughs> it's extremely realistic, because think about it, if if your government collapses and you still have barter. Who are the people? I mean, who is who is in in, in essence going to dictate what's worth to barter? You know what I'm saying? The, a lot of the infrastructure in the United States is privatized. Now in Europe, it, it may be government. Something Phil could probably fill us in and how much is subsidized by the government. But I, I have an instinct. I have a feeling that in Europe, that Europe has a lot of wealth in it. And I disagree with I disagree with the Europeans in terms of of that a society should be measured uh, uh, in terms of equality because equality is such a, is such a subjective term that they bring it into economics. Of course, I'm I'm not going to ever argue about equality of, of of human beings in themselves, but in terms of economics. You 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 infringe on you know you infringe on property rights for I understand a greater a perceived greater good, but since inherently in human beings are 
competitive by nature, why not embrace that competitiveness and use that to also embolden and strengthen those that are not as competitive versus restricting the competition to say we're going to raise uh, a lower half or I don't know what the proper term would be at this late hour uh, in, in, in no, as much as let, 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 let's let Phil answer <laughs> but my point is, is that I think that we should embrace what is inherently natural to human beings because so I, you know one thing I do and I get I'm a very political person very political person. I'm I am heavily involved in politics where I am locally. And you know, there's like this Republican Democrat thing in the United States. In England, I understand it's like the Tories and uh what's the other what are the other parties, Phil? The Tories and um, the Tories, Liberal Democrats and Labour, those are the main three. Liberal, your Labour, yeah. And, and in France, good lord, there's a tremendous... <laughs> uh, we're focusing on Europe uh, for the moment. Yeah, and, I mean, if, hey, even in Israel, there's a, there's a crap load of, uh, of, of parties there. Uh, um, I would say that Israel uh, is one of the most, like, direct democracy type situations because their, their Knesset can never agree on anything. I mean, there's like such representation that it's like a constant argument but I won't get into that because I know that we can get into like Middle East stuff later but anyway um, because I'm not a, I'm not a I, I want to say that quite simply that I have a, a great many of Palestinian friends but I will argue against neighboring Arab countries I will make this extremely brief that I find it hypocritical that Arab, Arab nations want to assist Palestinian, Palestinians for a end goal of proving their point against Israel rather than actually caring for the people themselves. So, uh, I'll just... Uh, before, but let, let's finish on Europe before we get yeah, into the yeah, Middle East sure. because the Middle East has a whole different mm-hmm. thing going on. I, think, yeah. I believe a question was asked to Phil about I, I, Europe. I took four years of Arabic in college and I made... And, and let me tell you, I have been the gamut and all of that, and I am not the type of person that is like as black and white as many people live. I, I mean, I ran Middle East Information Center, which you can still look up on Google um, for a few years, and I recently sold it. But anyway, with 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 Europe in terms of England, I found interesting in, interesting that like uh, what is it called NHS? Is it called NHS? Phil, your health system. Yeah, NHS, yeah. That the, the majority now, what is it, more than 50% of NHS is now sponsored by private parties within England to help subsidize and or, uh, offset some of the cost. Is that, is, that, is that still going on now? Yeah, it's just advice to say it's, it's in trouble. That's, that's the best way to say it. Well, you know, I, I, actually, before we move on on that, I want to ask on this because the United States of America is convinced, to, and they always hold Europe up as a perfect example, particularly England, of why socialized medicine is just the best thing for everybody. Okay. Uh, it, 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 you guys don't know. i got to make a head break, but I'll be back in... Uh, out of curiosity, Phil, um, what, what's your honest assessment of your your medicine system? You know, is... Is it financially sound? Is it in trouble? Is, is it worth what you're paying in your tax for it? To, to be honest, as far as you know, as far as I'm concerned, where where tax is concerned, you know, that's just what it is. But as far as the actual NHS system itself, I think that it is financially going into more problems at the, at the moment because, like you know, um, Bit just said, that they are having to privatise parts of it and, and they well, and they've closed, I mean, the, the hospital nearest to where we live has just had their uh, their emergency department closed down and I can't remember, but I think that they were considering getting rid of the whole hospital there. So it's... Well, don't, do, 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 do me a favour, Phil, don't get critically sick. We can't afford to lose you. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Decision to close it, the private company or Parliament? Oh, yeah, I, I, I think it was the council. To be honest, that that's 
my um, understanding of it, I mean, and a lot of people wrote their understanding, they were absolutely livid, they weren't happy about it, and I mean, just, you know, you just think to yourself, like, you know, it was a great idea, the whole NHS thing, and it's just a shame that it doesn't seem to be working for various reasons. Well, I, I can tell you that, see, the idea, and I see, I don't, I, when I argue against, uh, I don't, because I don't consider myself a publican, but, um, that when I argue against... I, I consider social... myself an anti-Democrat, anti-Republican. I think they've both lost their mind and need yeah. to be stopped. <laughs> when, I argue, when I argue, my position is that, yes, those with have, that have low income should have access to health care. But how do we do that? By making health care cheaper. I have not heard one iota of a message that makes health care cheaper. I've heard about savings accounts in the United States. Okay, I do personally use a health savings account. And we call it an HSA account. It works way better because I'm not going to give my damn money to an insurance company and hope they give it back when you need it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now, my point about health care is that regulation should come out of it as well as competition to make it affordable for lower incomes. Would, I, don't get no, don't get me wrong. I don't. There are situations that I'm willing to pay taxes for people who are absolute, absolutely without without a doubt they cannot be productive and therefore need to be having some sort of safety net to take care of them. I am I am a person that will say, you know what, I'll pay my taxes for that. But you're going to go through a screening process for me to approve it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, my, but I will definitely not. Because uh, I know quite a few people that cannot be productive in any any means of the imagination. They they try to, you know, they're very depressed, and I and I feel sorry for them. And there should be some sort of thing. I mean, so I'll make that very clear. So I'm not I'm not entirely of saying, oh my gosh, that all taxes are evil. There's there is a a natural no, 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 no. advantage, if I might say, in quote unquote to having things centralized and run by a government. Well, the, 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 the problem I run into with that is, there, and there's a, sh uh, there's a shift going on in the U.S. right now, and, and we're, so, we're, we're sorry to be, you know, arrogant Americans talking only about the states here for a minute, Phil, but I have to go off on it. There's a shift in the U.S. right now where there's a number of people who are moving from, I want the government to be providing security so I can pursue what I feel I need. There's, there's a yeah. shift going away from that to I want the government to take care of me yeah, in every sure regard sure. yeah, on that. as they yeah. see fit. And I'm yeah. and those are very different things. Providing Absolutely. security so that I have free trade, I have liberty, I have the ability to make my own choices. I, I, yes, I, I, I'm, all, yep. I'm all for that. But that, I don't want you to be my parent. <laughs> yep. I'm like my for, me, you know, for me, a simple solution for like drugs. Pharmaceuticals should be separated from healthcare. Why are they included in healthcare? I have no idea. No, well, because they, inevitably they wind up intertangled. You need no, drug X not. for thing they're B. Not. Pharmaceuticals are a commodity. End of story. I don't care how people want to try to tie it in. It is a commodity. Okay. And what 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 about people with neurological conditions or disability? Okay. I'm gonna get to that. In the United States, we do not have as much competition amongst pharmaceuticals as you do, like my wife's country in Guatemala. You can walk into a pharmacy and get a tremendous amount of competition, even if it's a third world country. I don't care. I have physically observed, taken notes in, in, with my own eyes and seen extreme extremes of their markets and pharmaceuticals and what they offer to their citizens. The same goes for, you know, like what like what Canadians like what Canadians would say when they buy U.S. U.S. pharmaceuticals at volume because pharmaceuticals believe that one is better than zero. You know, in the end, but that Europe has a competitive system that we need to allow more competition within pharmaceuticals, and that doctors in healthcare need to have 
less say in terms of pharmaceuticals advertising to doctors for prescription and that that burden should fall on pharmacists. If, because pharmacists are the end salesman anyway. So I believe that in the United States that pharmaceuticals should be selling to pharmacists and not doctors. And that way I can separate the costs in this, this outrageous amount of money that goes into advertising to doctors and, te- and because believe me, my, my wife used to work in healthcare. Oh no, I, 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 I'll agree with that. It always irks me a little bit when you walk into a doctor's office and the clipboard you're signing on is, you know, from a pharmaceutical sales rep. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, what the hell? It's like... Exactly. <laughs> pharmacists need not to be selling to doctors. They need to educate doctors. They need to educate them. But the pharmacists here need to be the salesmen. And that's fine because the pharmacy is the store after all, is it not? More competition needs to be allowed in this country. Okay? The FDA needs to get off its high horse in protecting some markets. And I'm sorry, people can label me a conspiracy theorist or whatever. I don't give a, a damn. But we're too compartmentalized on what gets through and what doesn't get through. And that we need more, more competition in pharmaceuticals in saying, hey, fine, you know what, if there's side effects, disclose it, and allow personal responsibility to fall on the individual for choosing, you know, the, the actual end results of the decide. Now, the doctor can still prescribe, but I think that we need to take medicine and make far fewer drugs prescription and more over-the-counter. Well, over-the-counter I, is a I, form I, of patent, please. Over-the-counter over versus prescription is a form of protection for our pharmaceuticals here versus other countries. If you go to other countries and you're there for a while, you will see that the United States, the way we use pharmaceuticals, is a form of protection. Well, no, okay, the, 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 it's one th- the, there are certain drugs that should be prescription only, you know, certain, yes, I, I so, yes. certain methamphetamine sign and, and other things, yes. but, I, but I would agree with you, as well as I would argue most of the drugs that have to do with certain neurological conditions, um, like Depakote, Ritalin, lithium, things like that. Cause I, think that there, I think that, that you realize in the United States that I've witnessed, because I've written medical programs, so I know this firsthand, that endocrinologists see patients for headaches, for common flu, whatever, when they should be seeing patients for diabetes. Now, as a government, I'm not going to make a law in saying that endocrinologists should only see diabetes patients. But what I will do is saying, you know what? You don't need a six-year degree to evaluate a patient with a common cold. You can, you, can, you can have less school years in college, a lower fixed cost, to see people with preventative medicine at a cheaper rate than people saying, I want to see my endocrinologist. Now, they're free as consumers to say, you know what, I'm going to go see the endocrinologist because I like how he is with me. But you know what, as a consumer, you're going to pay more because you're going to charge more because his fixed costs are high. The only way the utopia you're talking about is going to happen is a, is a, is a, is a, is a com- no, no, no. What, what you're talking about is allowing less school doctors to see, th- to see things. That's and, and happening. Care. PAs are, are beginning to be able to prescribe, and that's what I'm saying. We should be able to have levels of medicine where doctors are not end all be all that certain classes of pharmaceuticals can be prescribed by those that are physician's assistants or nurses that have some medical education. But let's be real. But but the only places the only places I'm everything? The only places I'm seeing that happen in is areas where they've done at least a moderate amount of malpractice reform to Ah. put it into the ambulance chasers. Doctors, even with at many school years they have, it's already abusive to the system. You're not going to be able to weed it out. There's no margin that we can set mathematically that says, I can send a person to school for 10 years versus 4 years and classify the amount of level of medicine they can dictate and expect a different result. It's not going to happen. It's just not. No, I... We have brilliant doctors and 
and all of this that succumbed to as much as the corruption that exists now within the U.S. medical system. And it's sad to say, like, like Phil on, on, on the side of the pond, they've been there, done that, and dictating prices. And I have friends that in Japan, because I've been to Japan, um, that, you know, theirs, their hospitals are in heavily in debt. And, and they have price caps for everything that dictates stuff. Why not use competition to say, you know what? You can legally see patients for this level of, of medicine. This doctor is a specialist, obviously, to see if they're, if they're diabetic and they see they're endocrinologists and cancer and so on and so forth. That there are different degrees of medicine that we have to come to terms with and understand and say, yes, there is. And why the blanket policy for prescription medicine, competition within medicine, and and uh, how people how and, and that affect because that affects directly how people are paying for seeing healthcare. So I want to partially, mentally, if people can understand it, to put pharmaceuticals in the hands of this and. The doctor that prescribes something prescribes a class of medicine, and then therefore the patient takes the class of medicine that they're in, goes to the pharmacist and says, here's the class range that I have prescription for. And then with the pharmaceutical's help, it can dictate the best drug for them. Because let me, I, I, I person, I've personally witnessed in this country, and, and you can accuse me of being biased, but I've seen, I've seen doctors misunderstand chemical uh, reactions among... No, 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 and that, that, that's actually a point I was going to make on that. If, if you did it that way, at the end of the day, you'd be getting all your drugs from the same pharmacist... Who then would have? Who then would be choosing the actual drugs and would go? Uh, well, I recommend this, except you're taking this, and these should never be mixed. So I think you should take that. Yeah, because they have a far more. And, 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 and in the UK, I understand that pharmacy school is extremely stringent, and that because you know a lot of that weight does fall. In the United States, it should fall on that. The pharmacist is the prescriber, and you know what? If you need more pharmacists, fine. It's it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a capitalist market. Let's start hiring them if we can get the, ch the system changed. Because my end goal is is to say that government is not the answer to say that I'm going to subsidize and put price caps on everything to make people that are as less fortunate as myself with less income to afford health care. I would say my job as a politician is to make health care as cheap as I can possibly get it so that you can afford it. I'll bet the exceptions where being productive and earning an income is, is, is impossible, which I'm, I am as a, as a human being willing to pay for those for those for those for those people. But I think if you re, if you remove that bureaucracy, we can get rid of a lot of the costs that are in medicine. Believe me, because I have written medical programs where the insurance says it's this amount. And the doctors know that they're going to get this amount, so that they raise their price, because if they raise their price, the insurance has to change from the flat amount and say, oh, okay, so I'll raise it to this amount to pay you. It's a vicious cycle that eventually leads to some countries where they say, no, 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 we're going to put price control. But price controls, which people don't understand, cause a tremendous amount of limitation and growth. And therefore, I want to go the opposite direction. I want to embrace capitalism and say, I want to make incentive laws to say, let's deregulate or reclassify, if deregulation is such an enemy word to, to many, to say, let's open up new doors to say, competition will now exist here to indeed fragment healthcare in the direction that government was trying to achieve with price controls have a competitive and capitalist model so that we can allow true competition not overtax and allow those that are less fortunate with money afford true medicine at a rate where, because profit is not an enemy. Profit is not an enemy, which a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, you know, the socialist communist models have. I 
I guarantee if I can bring capitalism to you at a lower income at cheaper prices and have them compete over lower income individuals, their profit over lower income income individuals will lead to better health care for them. Well, and one of the things, uh, it's like, I, I don't know what the process is for getting a drug approved, for getting medicine to actually be classified for medicine as in Europe, but I don't know how familiar you are with that process here, but it's a freaking nightmare in the States. And, and literally, it is a felony in the United States to claim medicine as medicine when it hasn't been put through the 10-year study to prove medicine is medicine. Uh, and it, it's you know there's costs to do that and there's double blinds and there's other things and, and and I agree that studies should be done, but at the end of the day some of this it's not cut and dry about what 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 you know is really necessary to classify something as medicine versus not a sign. And you know, that's why you see all these things that are medicine, but they clearly state on them no medicinal value because they're forbidden to claim any medicinal value. Uh, you're getting, yeah, you're, yeah, you're getting a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. I, yeah, yeah. It, it's, I, 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 that process needs desperately to be streamlined. Yeah. And, and one of the real problems with the FDA here is in a lot of cases with some of this stuff, and the reason we know it's not snake oil salesmen and that it actually does have medicinal value is because the study has been done, it just hasn't been done in the U.S. So the study has to be done all over again for the FDA. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what about in Europe? Is the, can, and like in, in Europe, can you, use, can you use a study done by a, a someone else? as long as you can prove the validity of the science? Or does a whole separate study have to be done for your drug board to have medicine be classified as medicine and know it's medicinal? Uh, I, I think the way that it pans out, I think that, like you said, I think it is just, I think as, it, as like Europe is a whole thing, I think it is just the one as far as I'm aware. So if a study's been done in the States, it could be transferred over to Greater Britain and this medicine can be classified as medicine in Great Britain. And vice... It, it, no, wait a minute. In Europe, as far as as far as I have observed, that they have far more lenient um, competitive laws in terms of what medicine you can buy versus here. Yeah, yeah well, the, the, only, the only problem, uh, the only thing that does seem to stop them is, is the cost of it more than anything. It's because the, it, when patients have had real serious conditions and there's been um, something that can help them, the, and the, the people have told them that there is, and they've asked, like, could they have it? The only reason why, that as far as I've heard cases, where there's been the answer to no, it's been, it's been the cost of it. So it's not been okay, that's fair. Let me interject this, then. The medicines you're speaking about are, are not in control of NHS in saying that you need to see your, what is it called? You need to see, um, you guys go through, like, a, a, a pre-screening advisor before you're even referred to the proper the proper doctor and and then they dictate okay this medicine and then and they hand it over to what you're going to get right because i know you guys have an advisor or something that you visit no no my friend over in england said he, he would go to like this government advisor and you would talk to and then he would refer him to a doctor yeah, no, like I say, it's just the way I understand it is that um, it's when that, that, that they've asked their doctor, is there any treatments that can help them with their conditions, like depend, like whatever it is, and if, if they've told them there's been this other medicine and they've like, asked why hasn't they been, like, you know, given it to help them, the thing that it's always been down to has been the cost, like, so it's just been their own personal doctor as far as I know, so there's never, like, been a, a third party involved. Hmm. Okay. Because okay. I, 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 I mean, I had a friend that said you, he, he would go to like this guy. Maybe he's a doctor. He, he called him an advisor to me. That he was sick. He would have to. Ch he would check in with his advisor, and the advisor would then, okay, you're going to this doctor or or whatever, and 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 he would go there. Now you, you, it's not illegal to go private in your country. Like I know it is. Like Canada does not allow um, a lot of private medicine, to my understanding, from my Canadian friends, that they have to go through all this rigmarole in order to see something outside the, 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 you know, the, the health plan. But in England, I know that 
from from those that I know that they tell me about it that you do have the option of going private, but but at this time it, it's still more expensive going private than it is versus NHS, correct? Yes, uh, uh, yeah, most cases, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. But but that's but that but 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 that's been changing over time, correct? Yeah, it, uh, I think I think the more and more that um, private um, th- institutions and that are coming into it, I think that that, that is gradually shifting. I mean, the one thing that I am aware of, and I'm not sure if this is in all cases, but I know in some major situations with people, if they do go private for some conditions, that means that all their treatment for that condition has to be done privately in some cases, and that they can't have treatments from the NHS for that condition if they choose to go private in some cases, from what I understand. Hmm. Hey, Alright, so, like, right, so let's say you need an operation. What, what is your... What would be the first thing that you do? Like, you need... You have something wrong with your pancreas or something. What, what is, I mean, what is the, you know, the first process? Are you under... Are you under a private care in England? Or are you under NA, NHS? Or, or what, is, what is the, the logistics of, of how you go about from, from, from well, your side of things? Everyone's, uh, everyone's under NHS by default, uh, from my understanding. And the, the, for, as far as going private goes, you you have to be the one to make that decision. How can you say no, nobody um, like you know defaults to that? Everyone is under NHS by default to start with. Okay, but uh, so so you but do you? I I guess I'm using the wrong terminology from seeing this advice. Let's say you're sick. The way it was explained to me is like they would see. I, I don't know if he's a doctor or advisor or whatever, but they see this 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 person. That was the way it was explained to me by my friends over there in the UK, and that he and then and then he would check them out, and and then I guess see the validity of their claim. I guess what is what it would be. And, and, and I think, I think what he's asking, Phil, is say the some specialist or something like that. Is that correct or no? Yeah, yeah, I, I do know that for a fact. Like I say, in, I think in the early early stages um, of it, I think I think when, like you were saying about from um, the medication standpoint, I'm thinking like I think a bit further down the line. But at the start of the whole thing, if it is something that is quite um, a, like quite a major condition, they do have like. The every uh, like the person specific doctrine, and then they do have somebody that specialises in it. So I think I think I might have been getting my wires crossed. Okay, can I can I ask you a question? Let me let me, let me say this: if if you know, I mean I mean there are, because there are people that know themselves. You know they they're like they're, I I believe it very much exists that say somebody you know, they they obviously know what is wrong with them and they want to go directly to the specialist. Is that possible in your in, in England? Not as far as I'm aware, I think you have to go to your doctor to get your um, to, for your doctor to give you um, the examination first, so that he can be the one to tell you which okay, direction so that, you think you're right, going. So, okay, yeah, that is the advisor that they were telling me about. Then. Okay, yeah, you can't go directly to a specialist. Okay. Well, you know, but it's the same thing we have in our in our educational thing. You could be doing a job for 10 years, but the minute somebody decides you need an associate, bachelor's, or doctorate degree to do it, until you yeah, go, until, until you go pay for one, you know, you're know you not qualified to know 2 plus 2 equals 4. Away. If somebody wants to go to an endocrinologist for a headache, fine, but, but you're going to pay the fee. Because I think in the United States that it's, it's detrimental that we allow an endocrinologist to fill their schedule with people with headaches versus people with diabetes, correct? So I'm saying that... Well, and, and like what, what Phil was saying is they actually strongly discourage that because if you go yeah, do that... Because it, it, to do that, you would have to go private, and then if you go do yes. that, it, that entire condition is now uncovered. That's right. That's my point, though. That is exactly my point, though, is that they're using government to control where you go versus saying, let's use the markets. If I use the markets to say I deregulate medicine to where we have tiers of medicine that makes it affordable for a person with a headache to say, geez, I can pay $10 out of pocket to go treat my headache here with a doctor I don't know, okay? Versus this endocrinologist that I love, he's my he's my good buddy, whatever, but I'm gonna pay fifty dollars 
out of pocket to visit him. That's fine. I'm cool with it. Because they're paying the time in for that spot. Because capitalism has proved already that scarcity is dictated by supply and demand, is it not? The entire world automatically works on it. What, and, and whether socialists want to, and communists want to admit it or not, it's all supply and demand. It's just who controls it in the end. So the thing of it is, is I will use market forces to say, you know what, fine. You want to go see an endocrinologist to treat your freaking headache? You're going to pay $50 out of pocket because they have higher fixed costs. They're specialists. And their type of medicine dictates this price per hour. But you know what? You can go to freaking HDB, which is a grocery store for those that across the pond. We have a grocery store. You know that, what a hub is. <laughs> yeah, we have, it's, it's a grocery store that, that has pharmacies in them that actually have uh, physicians' assistants that can treat you a bit. It's, uh, this is a new thing that's happened in the United States and growing over the years. But um, you can go to like this, this, this physician assistant, if they were given the ability to truly have a tier medicine of prescription in defensive or preventive medicine that they have, you go there and you can say, no, I'm gonna pay $10 or whatever, and it, the rest is covered by. See, I don't believe in insurance either, other than I believe in gap insurance, but I don't believe in fully. Because whether income is distributed by God, did I do it? just stuttered on that word? Distributed it by the government or distributed by the private sector, it is still the distribution of wealth. I don't care who controls it, whether it's wait, private. Wait, 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 wait. Didn't, that didn't, model doesn't wait, work. Wait, wait, wait. Because that's why private insurance increases our premiums here in the United States and makes the cost of medicine higher. I only believe in gap insurance. And the difference, uh, I think that the objective here is is to get medicine so cheap that we can, it becomes a commodity. I, I, that may sound cheap to people, but I say that in economic terms because I want everybody to be able to afford it. And that, and the thing, in the ideal, and the ideology that I think of is that I wanted to make it so that the market gets it as cheap as. As is possible. There are markets that are out there that, by golly, anybody can. Because look at the poor. You know, I'm going to give you an analogy here. Uh, and it's a very real one because it's my, from my mother in law. My mother in law comes from Guatemala. Extremely third world country, very poor people there. Okay? She asks, and I live in Houston. She asked to see, when she first visited here, to see the poorest neighborhood. You, okay? I. I, I did quite frankly I just didn't know there were whites. I asked I asked around and found said so, okay now, and now I can take you there I took her to the best part of her reaction was they all have cars in their driveway they all have electricity what is poor about them they have less than me <laughs> what is poor about them and it's true. It's true. While priorities differ amongst people, because some people let their house decay, but they'll buy three thousand dollar rims. Or people will let their car decay, and they'll buy extremely expensive clothes. Or. People will let their cars decay, you know, and just buy a very cheap car and very cheap clothes and well, put all that money in their and, house. And, and, and you're getting onto a thing, like, 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 what, what's poor and what, and what's sun and so on and so forth. Yeah, I, 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 as like, that's very real. I, 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 but that's very real, though. That's what I want to escape. Is do you? I mean, when I was, and I've been married to my wife for 13 years. Uh, when I, when her mom first came here, I mean, that was like, holy cow! How, how do I answer that? How do I answer that? And I've been to Guatemala quite a few times. I've been to very many poor parts of the world a few times and seen poor. And um, how do you combat that? Because we're in the United States, and we, yet we have these political parties that go, we're not rich enough. We don't have enough. 
Well, no, it's like that, that's what I was going to say earlier. It's like, didn't you get the memo? It's like you were talking about distributing worth. Did you miss the, whim, uh, the memo that says the rich are the responsible for all the world's problems? It's their fault? It's like, I, I, I honestly laugh at this because depending how you define rich and poor, I am simultaneously classified in the United States as rich and poor. Uh -huh. Because there are there are times where either because of you know the number of contracts I need to maintain to pay my bills, uh, th there have been times where my annual income has been well below the poverty line. My bills are paid. Uh -huh. It's like but it's like but it, by the definitions of the poor, qualify for food stamps, welfare, shot everything else, even though. My bills are met. I got a roof over my head. I got food on my table. But I, but apparently, I'm poor. And then I'm also classified uh, as the richest of the rich because I'm self-employed. I make my own hours. I largely work for myself. I'm pretty much in charge of my life. I'm my own boss. I'm so. So it's like. Eh, it, it, it's an interesting contradiction, especially when I wind up in those years where I make less than 10400 because that's what I was interested in making that year. I'm like, this is an interesting contradiction. I'm simultaneously the rich and the poor. <laughs> like, that's a nice contradiction right there. We have many of those in this country. Hello. If you're married, you get a tax break, but yet you get a tax hike at the same time. Yeah. It's <laughs> like... <laughs> It's, 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 and, and that's how we are in this damn country sometimes. You know, it's like, and, 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 and I'm sorry. I, if people can disagree with me, and that's fine. I respect, but I come from a position that, yes, capitalists can care for the poor as much as socialists and communists believe they can. I just know deeply and by empirical evidence and by history and economically because that's my degree. Well, the, 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 well, but is that, it, what is that controlling things economically leads to more disaster? If, but if I am able to, if I am able to achieve the same goal, which I hate in the American politics, is like, well, you don't care about the poor, and I care about the. You well, know no, what? no, Shut no, the no, 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 the, 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 that's no, the right. thing. We, we try and make this. And you're the, either for you're either for socialist system or you hate yeah. the poor. And the reality is, like you're talking about redistribution of wealth. At the end of the day, it, it doesn't matter who you're taking the money from and who you're giving it to. There is only so many resources. Uh, exactly. So much wealth, so much thought, and, and at the end of the day, you can't spend two hundred and five percent of what there is. me, it's not a zero sum game because socialists and communists base their entire theories on zero sum. And 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 the thing of it is, is that everything is that, and that's the beauty of economics. Economics is named long ago the dismal science because econo economists made the mistake back then to take static variables and then compute off of static variables. Whereas we learned that very, very real and very practical that life is not static, but dynamic. But yet we are all guilty of taking snapshots of, of, of statistics and then using them as dynamic. Well, but see, but see, the problem is, is anybody who's ever done calculus, I can tell you the instantaneous Value. I can tell you this particular nanosecond snapshot, and I can use that to extrapolate guesstimations based on this nanosecond. That has, if that really worked, anybody who has taken college calculus could be a millionaire by playing the stock market. If, if the world really worked that way, in reality, just because this particular snapshot happens to imply means jack shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because after all, is it not if early economists predicted we'd be out of food a hundred years ago, and then the second set predicted we'd be out of food by 1950, was it? <laughs> I.e., the dismal science. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, based on that particular snapshot. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, that, and that's my thing. Look, I don't get into the sound bites of. Republican versus Democrat, or Labor versus uh, Tory, because there are political interests and power involved in that. 
truly, I would hope that those that are on either side of the camp understand the intentions of your opposite ideology. Hopefully, if you're an honest person, want the same thing as you do. And unless it's an election year, then the 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 devil. Economic model is myself. And, and, and that I would hope that they would realize that their model inclined too much control, which I do consider really anti-human. Because we, we are so diverse, because they actually preach on the moral side diversity, but economically diversity is out the window. At maximum control is put in, is put in there. And, then like, and, and on the opposite side of the camp, economic diversity is preached, but moral diversity is mm -mm, you can't have it so you know what i'm saying is that i always i always have a morality in terms of morality should always be local but of course there's extremities to that well people argue against me and i won't argue with them but there are a basis to morality and how we have functioning laws but I, i'm i'm more talking about uh, about the extra level Religion dictates comes into law is is, is more of what I'm getting at and and, and 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 when I make those statements, but economically, why can't the more communist and socialist side of the camps say the diversity that you appreciate in morality? How come you cannot you cannot appreciate it economically? And that embrace what you understand in terms of diversity of human beings morally. In that you cannot contain that same diversity economically. And well, economic the, 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 there's a fundamental there, there's a fundamental flaw, and I can explain why they can't accept that. Because for communism or socialism to work, it has to be everybody. If everybody isn't playing the game, then it doesn't work. If the, literally, it, all it takes is one person not playing the game. But one, of, one of the primary reasons, and, and I, I, I don't even know if we have anybody in Russia watching, but one of the pro primary reasons the Soviet Union fell apart is like if you, if you, there were there were the honest workers who were really working for the good of the Soviet Union, and then there were the opportunists who weren't playing mm. ball with the people; they were just opportunists. And don't, not, don't and they, the Harvard professors that went over there when they were transitioning that stole all their money as well. Yeah, it's like, but, the, it, but what tore that whole system apart was just the few opportunists. That's all it takes. And, and literally, they can't allow that diversity because the moment you have that diversity, you have the potential for opportunists, which will tear the whole system apart. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I never understood that, 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 that contradiction in that it's wonderful to have diverse, diversity in, in, in your moral code, uh, but you can't accept it in your, in your economic code. And I'm not of the opposite of camp that say I must dictate moral un, uniform code. I mean, there is, a, there is an extent that our existing laws, well, obviously, and, and, obviously I, I mean, because, you know, the problem is when you make statements like this that everybody's going to jump on your bandwagon and say, well, you're, what about murder and stealing? You know, I, I hope that when I'm discussing this that people understand the principle of what I'm talking about. There is an acceptable line of morality, obviously, where it's even, it's counterintuitive to have a society, okay? I mean, I'm just hoping that what I'm talking about is that there are an amount of laws that are superfluous to morality that become a strain on the system as well, that the socialists and communists or democrats or labor will argue against Tory and Republicans saying, wow, please accept diversity, please accept their individuality as a moral person, but yet when it comes to economics, they're like, on the opposite side, no, we must control them. And they don't get it. Profit is not an evil thing. Greed is. No, well, greed to an extent. I would even say that greed is inherent to profit. Well, now, so, he, he, here's the thing. All things... Wait, in, wait, 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 wait. Greed is inherent to profit. I want to succeed at something. Is that not being greedy? What about an artist who makes no money? Greed of being, I want to be a, perf I want to be a perfectionist of my painting is greed. It's not a monetary, 
But it is, an, it is, it is agreed of an emotion. I, 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 I would argue more that selfishness and pride than greed. And, and that's what I was going to say. There, there's the splitting of hairs there, but you, you're, you're talking to somebody here who literally deals in no absolutions at all. Like you I said, like you said, like you said, somebody was going to bring up murder. No, 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 I know that. Somebody asked me once, actually a long time ago, you know, they dealt in absolutions and they asked me, well, is killing somebody wrong? And I, I said I can't. Well, I need more information. Like I, it, it, uh, it, this is one of the many things that's wrong with me. Like you ask me, is killing somebody wrong? I go, well, I can't answer and that well, question. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't, get, you haven't, it, you it haven't. Self-defense. Well, no, yeah, yeah, no, that's the thing. Well, no, and, like, and, they, and then they said, well, no, killing somebody's on the wrong. I go, I go, bullshit. I'm a soldier defending my home country from an aggressive ascender, and the only way I can stop them is to kill them. Is that right or wrong? I'm a murderous psychopath going around killing people because I just find it fun. That's the same act. Both are murder. One of those is arguably very justified, moral, and right. The other one is, we need to lock this person the hell away from society for society's good. <laughs> it's, it's like... It, the, the circumstances matter, and it, th 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 this is something I fundamentally have a problem with as a whole. The moment you start classifying things right or wrong, you've created absolutions that are ironclad rules rather than guidelines of, well, right. this is a general guideline, but the circumstances define whether it is or isn't a rule at this particular sector. Absolutely, man. I, 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 Absolutely. How can we lock somebody morally in, on the opposite side of the camp up? Lock somebody economically. Well, We're no. both linked in that we need diversity on both sides and allow it to happen on both sides. Well, no, and, and, that, and that, that at the end of the day is the shining flaw of socialism and capitalism, and that for these systems to have a. Wait a minute. Capitalism does not. No, 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 no. Communism. Sorry. Co no, 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 not, not, no. Socialism and communism. Not, not, not. not. So, socialism and communism. It's government morality. Now, some okay, they have points on, but other things way too, way too off. I mean, I understand that for a functioning society, you do have to have default standards and things, even economically, but not so much as the point of where it where it interferes with personal property and personal and, and, and localized, I'm going to just put it, localized choice to your microcosm, okay? And yes, that's going to get into like a fundamental problem that I have with morality and, and, and homosexuality in this country. I have no idea, you know, it's like, it's like, and I, yes, I'll go there. Okay, I'm going to go there, fine. I have no idea why this, this country is obsessed with, um, this whole homosexuality and marriage thing. The way I break it apart you're, you're is that Jewish. Y'all you, 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 wrote the Old Testament rule that says yes, sodomy yes. is a. But wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! <laughs> wait a minute! But you also know that that Jews is against proselytizing, and also Jews are not allowed to invoke policy upon others. The Jewish philosophy is to lead by example, and that means the microcosm of Judaism is simply there to exist as, to say, an example, but not to interfere. That that fell apart with the class that, yeah, whether all Jews observe that or not, you know, whatever. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is that, what I'm saying is that, legally, in the United States, do, you, do, do people not understand marriage is a form of taxation in this country? The United States, by law, could give a crap. Well, no, the reason I think that's become such an issue is because we've done something in this country no, that no, no, I no, wish no. we'd never Let me done. Answer what's an issue. I'll tell you what's an, an issue. Look, I have extremely very close dear friends. On, uh, that are gay, that are, are actually opposing about this whole marriage thing. The finite result is societal acceptance in the end. Okay? That cannot ever be achieved. You cannot legislate morality. Because now you're in the camp of super uber conservatives that feel that they can morality. But if you're on the side of the camp saying, 
I think that I think we're going to stop making policy and laws to say in your mind you need to accept this, or I think the jail is is, is you know the, the, the things are entirely different. That's why I separated. The church should be free of government and saying you know what if the church itself were many uh, and, and, and I respect their holy beliefs and saying they don't accept homosexuality fine that church can say arbitrarily even well, if you well, know, no, the, 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 that, that's what I was going to agree to marry them well, fine. No, that, that's what I was going to say the, the reason I think it became such an issue in this country is because uh, the religious institution of marriage and marriage is a religious institution it, 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 but, 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 it, but it got entertangled with legal entitlement so it became a government institution also and I'm like it, it, that's that's what causes the real rub here marriage is a religious institution if a church doesn't want to marry somebody it's the religious institution but but it should have no effect on the legal rights or government yeah, it, liberties. There you go. Why do our insurance contracts say, you know, mail? That's what I'm saying. I'm, I, you know what? It's not a civil union or anything or whatever people want to call it. Why shouldn't, like my aunt, my aunt never married. She lives with her best friend. She's lived with her for, God, 30, 40 years or something like that. Dang. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, she, my, my, her best friend had, she had a spouse and all that other stuff, but they, there was like ins and outs. No, they're all spinsters. But by law, since they've been together so long, why don't you let them get a group insurance? Why don't you let them sign on a document to get a house together without going through the same pains as a married couple? What? Our forms and our legal shit should not give a crap. We do not need to give a crap about who's who. If two brothers that decide to go buy a house together and want to have group insurance, let them. If two best friends decide to do that, let them. If two homosexuals want to do that, let them. Now, I will argue against the homosexual argument where homosexuals try to use the Constitution in saying, well, blacks... Uh, had all this liberty via the 13th and, and was it 13th and 15th amendments or 14th amendments I would argue against them and say no the reason why those amendments were mandatory is because a law previously to those amendments was written that there was inequality the law had to be physically amended in those amendments to make equality homosexuality never has had a definition in the Constitution Therefore, it is an extreme gray area, and you cannot make the analogy to slavery and and and, and, and women's suffrage in terms. Well, of I, I, I I think I think in terms of societal acceptance, you can make yeah. an analogy to Jim Crow. Because honestly, when I sit down and watch the video of like Martin Luther King talking to the bus board. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, and it's like, it's like he, he's just talking common sense to them. He's like, we would like common sense. And, and the response they give is just from a different planet. And the look on his face of, you're on Mars and I'm on Venus or, or whatever. He's like, like, he didn't honestly, he, like, he was completely dumbfounded on how to respond to that. And, and I think that analogy in today's America does apply to the fags because there are plenty of bigoted people in that respect who is yeah, like they're, they're talking to them and it's yeah. just I, I don't know how to respond to that <laughs> yeah and that's why I'm saying let the law be the law and let religion be religion I respect a church to say we do not recognize homosexual couples fine I will not use the law to force that church to say that. But if the law, which is a tax scheme, and I'm sorry, I'm always going to say this, which is like it's financial, let me first put it this way, it's a financial scheme. By law to say you're recognized as a couple, it's, utter, it's utterly unfounded in saying it's only, it only belongs to a male and female. If two best friends, two sisters, two brothers or brother and sister, homosexuals or heterosexuals that never decide to get married should all apply under the law. 
But right. I, I, I'll agree with that, but then again, it goes to the sun, you know. Right. I, 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 right. Right. Well, no, because the law is outside of religion. They, be, look, the finite, the finite argument of homosexuality is when you argue all the way to the nth degree, it comes down to being accepted by society. Okay, because we can make all the laws, all the laws in place, and I guarantee you'd still have the argument of saying, well, we're still not equal. Look at what is happening with minority, and I hate to use that, because I, I, John, I love it. You know, please, if somebody's watching, if you want to call me racist, please. You know, I'm married to a Hispanic. You know, I I I physically lived it. I've dated every freaking race uh, of the man. Ben, I got news for you. The fact that you're even making the argument means you've already lost. You know, j just say what you're gonna say and take the flight. Uh, you know, it's like bring it, please. I want you to call me racist if you think that. Is that today in the United States, it is profitable to segregate people. Yeah. People make six figures doing it in this country when they don't need to do it at all. I hate and resent those that any group that try to segregate and make a profit off of it. And even when a law is passed or something, and they'll make another damn nth degree in saying it's not quite good enough. Well, uh, and, 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 you know, when I hear all this, that, when I hear all this shit just, about, yeah, because, about... by golly, you will never legislate somebody's mind and accept it. Except you will never legislate somebody's mind, but embrace those. Because let me tell you a true story. This is a true story, okay? And I'll just tell you right now. My parents raised me to be extremely racist, okay? My best friend, Larry, who is black, I brought him to my parents' house. This is a true, I'm going to tell you a true story because I've, I, I've lived it. And I, I want everybody to call me, you know, you want to call me racist, bring it. Larry sat at my front door and my parents denied him entry into my house the first time. Why? Because he's black. Can't come in the house. My brain was like, what, why? He's my friend. How come you can't come in the house? This started with it, this started a, a major war with my parents, which is now all resolved. So it's all great, and I love my parents for, for coming and becoming better people for that. But back then, couldn't come to my house. It took a month for my best friend Larry to even get into the foyer of my parents' home. Couldn't come into the den, couldn't go in the living room. The foyer. It took almost four months before he could enter the house and be considered walking amongst you know, <laughs> this is how the sickness I live in. That, that walking in the house as as um, you're making my head hurt. Yeah, for free. You know, <laughs> like oh, any way you want. And now, but I want you all to appreciate my parents too, because they came from that. And I will. And another true story is that my mother, my first son, she didn't want to touch because he's he's half Hispanic. For, for a month. That's her problem. That's her blood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's not her problem anymore. Now, my, my, I, I, because I, want, I want to now put a, a, a happy end to that, is that now my grandchildren are inseparable from my parents, and now my parents are, are extremely different people from when I was in back in high school and, 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 and the way they treated, them, they treated my friends that were of different color. Now it's a completely, utterly different story, and they are extremely loving, and fair, and, and they're the best people on earth, love them to death, and and, and and more power to them for being a for being in a position of where they were, and change something different. Well, no, and I, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I can't. That is where I have lived, uh, and, and, and where I've come from, in that damned people that use, to this day, the ability to segregate people for a profit. Well, no, 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 see, that, that, that's the thing. Every time I hear somebody bitching about that or something, and I, and I would argue um, societal-wise, that's largely becoming the case with, uh, you know, I don't even know what the politically correct term, I don't care, homosexual fact, whatever. But, you know, honestly, I, I'm thinking more, more and more, for the most part, aside from some zealots, 
as a whole, society tends not to even really care. The, the people who I see caring about it are government bean counters who are trying to figure out what peg to put people in, and the fact that that peg hole even exists is part of the problem. Uh, and, Absolutely. Uh, right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, look at the way we take our census in this country. It, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it kind of makes me sick that we still take our census that way, because it's, it, it, it's irrelevant. How many males we got, how many females we got, of what age. That gives me an idea how many kids we're going to have in the next years. I have an idea on the population. I know everything I needed to know for the census. Now, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what the situation, you know what, we're on this tangent. But honestly, I think for the most part, uh, our, our generation and, and obviously our kids, it's like, cause it's like this, just because of the, the way we grew up and it's not, Honestly, I think if you're under the age of 40 in the United States of America, you're largely part of a generation that doesn't give a shit. And when you see the news obsessing about this shit, mm -hmm. or the politicians, or some lawmaker, or someone, you're like, what are we in, the 1700s? What planet are you on? That's yeah. like, like, they, 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 they don't tell you the do it. Yeah. that is, has derived from this. Is that my 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 kids don't see color, and my wife had mentioned that, in, in that I come from a generation that very much differentiated on color and other and other bigotry, not beyond color. And my kids, I can honestly say, you know, my, like my oldest son, he goes out and and he will play equally with anyone and not even ask a question. It's it an is, irrelevant it, issue. It, it, for his mind, it is assumed that diversity and that we are all different is part of all naturally being. We are all equally human beings. There's no differentiation. And, and, and I, I, I wasn't the one that made that comment. My wife was the one that made that comment because, you know, with the immigration laws and stuff like that, I strain with my with my wife on, on that there's a difference between security and actual immigration law and that security is more the border and immigration laws differ from the border. And we'll get into that in another show because it's a very long oh, conversation. Yeah. But, but no, my wife is very much in agreement with me and in, 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 in what I mean. Um, and, 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 and she was bringing, she was bringing up the, the, just, just, just recently again when my old son was playing out there, she was just like, or, you know, he doesn't see anything. It's, it's like, it's awesome. And, and, and I think that is the ultimate gift if anybody wanted to look at a lineage and say, where do my parents come from? And then, and then me being their, their own son and then their grandchildren. And, well, how no, and, 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 and that's the thing. Unless you're just fresh off the turn up or fresh off the boat into this country, there isn't one person in this country who's pure anything. It's... Um, with very very few exceptions, uh, but you know it, it, it's you know America is a melting pot, and it's not, and like you say, people are not. Now, what infuriates the bejesus out of me on this particular issue is like the people you're talking about who make their bread and butter out of trying to tear humanity apart. They're like a freaking sickness, because like you're yeah. saying, your kid is entirely immune to it, and at some point. There's going to be some bigoted asshole who is going to come up to your kid and mm -hmm. accuse him of being a racist. And then your kid's going to try and going to fall into that logical argument of trying to prove they're not a racist mm -hmm. and without meaning to, without meaning to. Uh, and, I, and, I've, and I've seen this happen to people and it's not, it's not without meaning to, to try and prove they're not a racist. They start counting how many people they I interact know, with know, of different, know, uh, and then without know. meaning to, they've introduced that mindset into their head of classifying people by nothing other than that. And it's yeah. just, I, I like it. I hate these people for trying to perpetuate that because, like, like you say, it's not natural. It's not in human nature. The only reason it exists in any way, shape, or form is because of a few assholes who are trying to perpetuate something that. Is all but dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, Phil, what is your opinion on all this? I mean, he's been silent. I was going to ask him on that. States policy, I, 
I mean, to be honest, I think people should just be, in any co- uh, um, context of it, you know, the first thing I think people should be allowed to do what they want to, but as far as people of different, you know, cultures and what have you, I think the people that I, that I have a problem with when it comes to that are the people on both sides, either who, um, you know, basically criticise the others, and, or the people in the certain cultures that basically segregate themselves um, from the rest and don't mingle in, those are the cultures that I have a problem with, whichever ones they are, because then that makes the divide even worse. I, I personally don't see a difference between racism and reverse racism, which is what I think you're no, talking no. about. It is reverse. It is. Why do you even classify it? When there is segregation, it is racism, period. Well, yeah, but it's like we're so politically correct now. Oh, that's not racism. Yeah, that's reverse yeah, racism. You know, you're right. It's the same thing. Argument. Those <laughs> that advocate themselves as a race are as racist as, it, as, as those that they intend to refute. Yeah. It's... Just, I, I mean, it's it, it's it's a mentality that makes no dang sense to me. One of my I, I have like very few things I know to be true, but there, uh, two of my core values are strength through diversity and growth through tolerance. I have a very few ironclad rules, but that's two that's two of my very few rules because they're truisms, you know. Yeah. It, it, there's there's over a billion humans on a planet. That's over a diff over a billion different points of views. Now of, let me of, ask you a question because we'll, we'll get back to where, where we started where where, where where it comes to homosexuality. Because I am also when I said the church should not be interfered with, that means that there's a church who embraces homosexuality as they recognize as marriage should also be a left alone. So, my thing is, is that I do find that both camps use the law to try to dictate the church, mm-hmm. which I think both are wrong in doing. That in saying, I want to use the church to prevent homosexuality, and I want to, I want to use the church to accept homosexuality. I think they both should differ, and therefore the law, in my argument, should have no say in, in what is religious belief, in that if you're a group and you want to enter a contract with your two best friends, Two neighbors, a brother and sister, two brothers, two sisters who want sexualities, two people in love, two ex- who's heterosexuals in love, whatever, can enter into a contract with the government because they can tax you and tell you that you're getting a tax break at the same time equally. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh no, no, no! I, I, I've seen the tax codes for joint returns. I, I haven't, I, I, I haven't, um, I haven't found anyone yet that I'm willing to take on the obligations of joint tax returns for just yet. It's like, it's like, <laughs> That's my point. Now I know for Phil, you know, he's like, well, you know, but, but uh, here, I'm sorry. You know, let's give it up, okay? You know, just yeah. Uh, well, well, what what he's talking yeah, about here, I will, Phil, I will, I will is you you you, 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 you get an extra person deduction. Homosexual is disgusting, and they will never allow it in their church, and there and that is the right to do so. But it's also the right of the homosexual uh, for a church to embrace homosexuality and say that they are just as pious by their interpretation and saying they were going to under the law. And saying that we will recognize homosexual marriage, and by law they're empowered to do so. But when it comes to non-religion, and we're in the law, the law has no discrepancy under the Constitution to say, "Well, geez." Well, no, well, and, and see, honestly, that is where the constitutional argument comes in because um, uh, it's. You could make an argument on that issue that there's First Amendment implications because the First Amendment, like what you're talking about, you know, that, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, that you're allowed to pursue, uh, pursue, to pursue or reject whatever religion you happen to sign, and like you're saying, at the end of the day, this comes down to a religious principle, which right, means it I should have a, no of, of marriage and and and. and and the most arguments that I've had with heterosexual and homosexual on both sides of the argument comes to societal acceptance. And that there would be the ideal of marching down the aisle, whether the, you know it's heterosexual or homosexual. But the thing of it is, is I can't by law force a church to abide by that. And I can't by law discourage or prevent a church that will accept it by doing it. Now, 
with religion set aside by law, how is it that I said, because we don't have definition, that's the problem right now, is that the Constitution has a lack of definition in terms of married. But married under law, with absent, absent of religion is nothing more than government taxation and, and, and financing schemes. Is the way I say it, because my wife works in taxes today. <laughs> so, so if anybody who wants to come up with me, I know all the tax law because I hear it. I hear all about all the tax breaks and the taxes that are adherent to marriage. Okay? So, uh, by law, absent of a gym, and, and by insurance, or by buying a car, or whatever, why does, if somebody wants to go to Humana, or Blue Cross Blue Shield, or you're not in healthcare, or NHX, you know, I don't know how it is in Europe, whatever, but I'm just saying, how come that those companies get to dictate a male and female as a contractual agreement? Why are they in the business of saying this is what we'll accept? Now, by law, you know, arbitrarily say whatever they whatever they want because they're private. But as well, a civilization, and I would think as a profit incentive. Well, no, and, the, and the, the, that's one of the <laughs> money. Is why would you turn away another customer? Well, well no, and, and they, see, and no, no, see, but see, getting on the point you're getting on right here now, and hopefully, this is one of the reasons I think largely uh, the whole fag issue, aside from the religious people, is largely becoming a non-issue in the country too, in, in spite of you know lack of constitutional ministry sign, because more and more, for the reason you're talking about, about the bottom dollar, more and more insurance companies, companies, yada yada, and so forth, are figuring out some way to shove a square peg into a round hole on their on their insurance forms and stuff to figure out a way to recognize uh, homosexual relationships and say, well, no, we're going to... That's what I'm saying. Also by the Constitution, we cannot make special rights. Remember, yeah. we, can, yeah, we, have, we, have, we have the anti, anti, uh, the anti-slavery abolish, abolish any rights in the Constitution because laws previously that be yeah, it's like if, if, you, if you want to talk about one of the big fuck ups in the United States Constitution, look at the three fifths compromise. Huh? If you, if you, anytime somebody starts talking about constitutional law and the sanctity of the U.S. Constitution, I go, you know, it's not exactly perfect. We have this horrible little thing called the three fifths. Called the three. It's not perfect, but it is our law. So what I'm saying yeah, is that we have anti women we have women's suffrage and anti slavery amendments specifically because previous law existed. When it comes to homosexuality we have no definition. But there, but but quite frankly, why do we need a definition? No, there shouldn't be one. Not under exactly. the law. Well, why isn't why uh, that's my point is why you can why on all these economic places where there is a drive for which I hate to use the word equality because I don't understand why it doesn't exist. Why can't why can't a best friend and and homosexuality a homose, a homosexual couple and and, and 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 sister and brother not apply for a group contract? Yeah, well, it, it 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 doesn't exist, and, and now I I'm hesitant to bring this up because I'm going to piss everybody the frick off now. But it doesn't exist because the United States is a largely Christian country, or it's a country that perceives itself to be a Christian country, and one of the things, and this never makes any sense to me, that Christian, and I apologize to everybody who's Christian, I realize this is assholes, but one of the things Christian extremists love to do is go back to the Old Testament mitzvahs, which supposedly, you know, were not Did even ironclad say, laws say, anymore. Say, say, say what? Did you just say mitzvah? Did I say it wrong? Or... I'm, talk, I, 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 I'm talking about. I, I'm talking about. I'm talking about. a difference between Jewish law and Christian law. There's a. There's a massive. Uh, okay, you, well, you, you can correct me on that. Sort of I'm talking about the, si the the supposed 600 some odd laws written it's not throughout. Not laws, but, yeah, but, yeah. But that doesn't apply to Christianity. Well, no, no, but no, no, but that, but that's the thing. When, whenever Christian extremists are going off on this is wrong, they're always going back to those rules, and I always find okay, that a little. Yes, there are very there are there are statements about male homosexuality. But there's no actual, 
<laughs> I mean, if you want to get down to literalness in, in passages, yes, there are things in, in the Old Testament that go against male homosexuality. But yeah. there is actually, ironically, nothing about female homosexuality. Well, no, yeah. no, 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 no. That, 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 that's the thing I always love to kind of, you know, snipe at these quote-unquote no, Christians no, no, no. who are hating <laughs> side. I'm like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's, show me where it says it. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. So, wait, wait a minute. So, it's not, that, it's not that God hates fags. It's God hates the act and only between two guys. And wait a minute, there's this other rule over here that says a way to repent for that, so why aren't you... Yeah, see, the thing of it is, is that I respect the fact that there is no way to repent for sin. There's no way to repent for the sins of the past. And this is the thing I never get about these uh, groups. It's like, I, I'm confused. You, supposedly yeah. you're a student of something that says turn the other cheek and tolerance and love and judge yet lost ye be judged. Yet you're only happy if you're dictating what's going on in somebody else's house. I'm confused. <laughs> well, again, it, 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 true Judaism is not allowed to prophetize and, and, and exert authority. Um, but, but, but um, I know it goes on, you know, and not, and not so much, I don't think, in, in Judaism as it does, and perhaps in Christianity, which I, I know in the New Testament is doctrine to proselytize. But um, the thing of it is, is that if religion can say a Muslim, is not, a Muslim marriage is not recognized in Christianity for a difference of per perception of God, then why is, why is homosexuality, if a church decides to acknowledge a homosexual marriage, that that differs any, that, 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 that there's some greater difference on that acceptance versus a Christian church accepting a Muslim marriage and vice versa? Well, you know... Because it, it, it's, it's all, wait a minute, my point is, is that it is all relative to their dogma, is it not? Yes, but see, and that, but see, at the end of the day, this is why this is such an issue, because it's relative to their dogma, and you're talking about some, when you talk about the theology, which is the dogma of somebody's beliefs, you're talking about something that is literally core to their self-identity, I, I mean, and especially when you start intermingling that on something that is like this holy institution of marriage. There, there are literally some um, churches that will recognize, it, like uh, people can get married and then they'll get divorced, but the, 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 the church community will not recognize the divorce. So in their eyes, if one of those people gets remarried, that person is cheating on their wife that they never divorced. Mm. And yeah. like, I, I, I have seen some oh dear god interpretations of dogma and it, it, it's I, I, we're, like, we're, we're, we're making enemies with every word we say here I'm sure I don't care, I love <laughs> politics and religion I mean, you know, oh no say, no people no. say people discuss politics and religion with friends and it's ironic that politics cover your life right now and if, you, and if you're a, a person of, of faith and I accept the atheists and say, oh my God, how can you believe? Whatever, okay. Fine, uh, you know, that if you are a person of faith, it dictates the life afterwards, you know. So, uh, I think they're very relevant material, and, and that's fine. I don't really engage in the whole belief in, 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 in non-belief sector, because I know YouTube is rampant with hmm. atheists. Atheist versus bully, and, and quite frankly, I'm, I I would consider myself much more an analytical person and, and accept much of the scientific doctrines that are out there, and actually don't pretend to want to argue and say uh, religious doctrine is correct, you know, and, and this and well, that. You and, know, and, I actually and, try. And, to, and, and one thing we can say that's universal, regardless of your point of view on this, whether you believe in God. 
Jesus, many gods, gods and goddesses, no, nothing at all. At the end of the day, no matter what conclusion you're taking on this, no matter what, no matter what you subscribe to, no matter what book you believe in, no matter what doctrine you're signing, at the end of the day, you're taking it on faith, and you're taking the conclusion that makes the most sense to you. Absolutely. 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 Do you want to make this any worse, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> no, because to be honest, I think you've got it spot on there. I mean, me personally, I don't go along with any conventional religion. I, I, my, my, the way I see it is that odds on there is something after after human life, but nobody knows what it is because nobody's ever come back to tell us. That's the way I see it. Yep. You know, and I've had lots of demons, which, which other Jews would mean by that. You know, or food study. But one of my one of my favorite is my mom, and I love guys of a good perspective. Is it pretty good routine? It's you know, uh, Your audio is entirely breaking up. <laughs> yeah, guys is pretty phenomenal in, in my opinion. But um, I had a rabbi once say that because in the Jewish doctrine, I'm so that we actually have sufficient enough to, you know, to understand in total. And therefore, if we were to keep logic true to that, and that we can't understand, understand God in total, that means that we only understand a part of God. And that means that essentially someone else is, is, is just as valid in saying they understand a different part of God. Well, no, and that's why I was saying you're taking this all on faith. You know, when you're when you're dealing with the questions that religion address, our theology, our philosophical beliefs, or, or lack thereof, our rejection thereof. At the end of the day, you're dealing with questions that have no absolute answer because yeah. there is no unempirical proof any way right. whatsoever. Now, the, the only time I get to argue is when. And, and it's not to be insulting is when Christian doctrine uses Jewish texts to validate their beliefs. And, and see, that's a problem when one religion tries to say we are we are using your religion as our foundation, and then rewriting history to say your foundation your foundation actually says this to support our belief. I have a problem with absolutely, and I get into a lot of. Massive debates, and that, you know, with, with, that, with, with stuff like that, with especially like groups with uh, you know Jews for Jesus and stuff like that, where um, attempts are are made to say, well, Jewish doctrine supports this and this and this. And you this you know, Jesus. I, 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 I and not yeah. not to make fun of any Jews for Jesus, but when I hear the term Jews for Jesus, <laughs> in my mind. I instantly set it on the same shelf as that thing Trey Parker came up. Uh, Trey Parker and Trent came up with South Park, where they said they, they 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 had like this Jewish council getting together, and one of the right. sects was the anti-Semitic Jews. <laughs> and I was just like, that is. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, and I, and I I I try not. To, I try to be as respectful as possible, but uh, but I will. At any time, engage debate when somebody when somebody of a different faith. I mean, now amongst amongst Jewish debates, it's it's fine. But when another faith, I won't use an adjective I was about to use, but another faith that that wants to dictate my beliefs to me to support their own faith, I have a problem. Well, no, and, and that's the thing. I honestly wish religion was not such a button for most of humanity, and we could honestly just have open, honest uh, discussions. I don't want to say debates. Debates is the wrong word, but just general discussions. Yeah. Well, that's not debate. They can be civil. Well, well, no. The the reason I prefer to use the word discussion over debate is because debate imply it, the end goal of a debate is to win. Mm. And, and I, I don't want to infer that you know there should be a loser and a victor. Okay, I would say that, but though <laughs> if if one is to say that my doc my dogma equals X when I know it's Y based upon my dogma, all in a rational theory, of course here, 
that I no, I, a debate would have to be a bigger in saying, no, I'm sorry, my dogma does represent why. Now, you are free to say your, doc, your dogma is X, Y, and Z, and what, use whatever uh, uh, you know, support dogma that you have. And you know, what's, fun, what's funny is that Jew, the majority of Judaism has accepted Christ, Christianity as saying they're as righteous. Um, because the insistence of believing in, in, in one God and what uh, very often Jews would call the Noahide law, which is the laws given by Noah. But, but uh, they're, they're, what's ironic is that there are many Christians that will not, that will condemn many Jews to hell. Well, it's a, well, a, 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 we should have another discussion on this next a, 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 uh, next week, unless y'all want to keep going. Uh, it's uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm not there. I mean, we've gone from alcohol to politics. <laughs> I, I, okay. In, in that case, in that case, hold on. I, I'm gonna pause the recording for a minute, and then we'll start getting into theology because <laughs> I, I want to I want to make sure to preserve what we got.